evidences that we said the Bible helps us, um, well, we can use the Bible to identify supernatural manifestations as to whether those uh, manifestations are in fact the work of the Holy Spirit or the work of another spirit. And in today's teaching, we want to have a look at the absence of faith um, as being one of the, uh, the fourth evidence that helps us to identify supernatural manifestations when they take place as being um, not the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, because in order for the um, gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself to be made manifest in our midst amongst the church, faith has to be present. It is a, a, um, a key requirement for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be made manifest among the saints. Now that's not the case when it comes to demonic spirits, spirits that are of this world. Uh, faith is not required. Supernatural manifestations will take place whenever uh, people desire to see that happen. Uh, but faith in God is not required in order for those manifestations to take place. And so the Christian walk is a, is a walk of faith. The scripture is very plain. The just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17 and uh, the Apostle James, in his writings to us, in James 1, 6-7, he says to us that uh, if we, anyone desires wisdom, let him ask of God, but let him ask in faith, nothing doubting. And then he goes on to say, he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, uh, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man think that he will receive anything from the Lord. And so <clears throat> it is impossible for us to receive from God except by faith. That is how God has designed the Christian walk and we're meant to live by faith and walk by faith. The Apostle Paul um, speaks about it in his writings, Galatians 3, 2-5, just with, with regards to us not receiving except by faith. There are going to be instances where God will move in His sovereignty and He will do something um, that He chooses to do outside of the, the saints exercising their faith, or even uh, unbelievers exercising their faith. And that sounds a strange thing to say, how can unbelievers have faith? Well, they do. When the scripture, is, when the scripture calls unbelievers unbelievers, it's talking about them not believing in Jesus as their uh, Lord and Savior. Uh, nevertheless, everybody on the planet still has faith. And we'll touch on it slightly as we get into this teaching today. But the Apostle Paul, in writing to the churches in Galatia, around this whole um, issue of the Holy Spirit being made manifest among them and displaying His gifts among them, he talks about the fact that <clears throat> it can only happen by faith. Scripture says, This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And so the Apostle Paul is very uh, plain to us that we can only be filled with the Holy Spirit by faith. And he said, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith? That's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul is speaking about. And then in verse 5, when he goes on to say, Therefore he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith? There he's talking about the display of the gifts of the Holy Spirit being made manifest in the church. And he answers the question very clearly that it can only be done by the hearing of faith. And so um, it is... A key ingredient that is required for the Holy Spirit to be able to make himself manifest among the church uh, through his giftings um, and that requirement is faith the expectancy of the the congregation of the members of the of the body of Christ that he will move among them then and only then can he make himself manifest through his giftings and so even with regards to the baptism of the Holy Spirit um, Paul talks about, did you receive the Spirit by works of law, by the hearing of faith? Um, there are the five accounts in the book of Acts, which, which we've dealt with in this series thus far, um, discussing the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, of all five accounts, 
four of them uh, manifested the baptism of the Holy Spirit only through the hearing of faith. Um, the, the day of Pentecost, the saints were in expectation of being filled with the Holy Spirit, for our Lord had told them to wait for Him and that He would pour out His Holy Spirit. So they were there in faith waiting to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul was, um, he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit through laying on Ananias' hands through the hearing of faith. All of it, the, 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 the gospel is preached, the word of God is preached. Jesus told his disciples, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Day of Pentecost, they were filled. And Ananias told Paul, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit. They hear, heard the word of God and were thus filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and the saints in Samaria, Peter and John went down there and preached to them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Faith was built up and they then received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The, the Apostle Paul in the church at, at Ephesus, the 12 disciples, um, he explained to them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Faith was built up in them and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit through his laying on of hands. The only instance of the five where there was no faith exercised for the baptism of the Holy Spirit was when the Gentiles were first baptized with the Holy Spirit. You recall Peter preaching in Cornelius' house on that day and the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, there was no faith exercised in the baptism of the Holy Spirit by those disciples at that time. They were just been born again. They just received the gospel of salvation message and they believed that. But we said that the reason that God did that in His sovereignty was because that was the only way God could convince the Jewish believers that the Gentile had now come into the kingdom of God and he thus baptized them with the Holy Spirit. So of the five accounts, four, uh, the Holy Spirit's baptism only took place as a result of the hearing of faith. And the Apostle Paul just reinforces that particular truth to us in his letter to the churches in Galatia. In that he says, guys, the Holy Spirit can only make himself manifest among you by the hearing of faith. And that's something that we have to really understand and, and, get, and get our minds around because, as I say, there are churches and ministries that display supernatural manifestations and no faith in God is present. There, there's just, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll touch on it a bit more. But let's just have a look at a couple of accounts in Scripture that reinforce this truth to us that the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, because um, subsequent manifestations of the Holy Spirit uh, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit always uh, are produced among us through the, His giftings. Now those giftings can, as I say, only really be displayed when an, uh, the uh, presence of faith is there. And there's, uh, the saints have faith, or even the unbelievers have faith, as we'll have a look at this particular account now, um, in the, the power of God being displayed. When that faith is being exercised, it's only in that environment that the Holy Spirit can then manifest Himself. And so um, the account we'll look at is in Acts chapter 14, verse 8 through to 12. The scripture says, And in Lystra a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he, he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leapt and walked. Now when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And so the Apostle Paul, when he preached the gospel, always did it in demonstration of the Spirit and of the power of God. 1 Corinthians uh, 2, 4, Paul tells us that. And so as an apostle, um, if you were in one of Paul's meetings, at some point in his meetings, you would have seen the display of the Holy Spirit through his giftings taking place through Paul's ministry as he operated uh, as an apostle anointed with the Holy Spirit. Um, if you understand the, the gift of the apostle, all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are made manifest through that particular office. And so, as I say, had you been in Paul's meetings, you would have 
um, at some point seen the gifts of the Spirit being displayed in his meetings because um, he operated in those in those giftings. Nevertheless, even the, whole, the Apostle Paul, although he was anointed by the Holy Spirit to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he could only do so if there was faith present amongst those who heard him minister the gospel. In other words, if they believed that he was anointed of God to operate in the gifts, then and only then would the gifts be made manifest through him. And we pick up that uh, uh, concept in this particular passage that we just read. Because the Apostle Paul um, was constrained to only be able to perform miracles and healings for argument's sake when faith was present. On this occasion over here, this particular man heard Paul preach the gospel. Now, when Paul was preaching, he was talking specifically around the area of the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ and how God heals in the name of Jesus. You say, how do you get that? Well, he, this man heard Paul speaking and had faith to be healed. And so the reason he had faith to be healed was because Paul was teaching on that subject. Had Paul been speaking about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the man's faith would not have been activated to believe in healing because he wasn't hearing that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans. And so that's exactly what was transpiring on this occasion. Paul was speaking around the, the healing power of God being made manifest through the name of Jesus. This man heard Paul speak and his faith was activated and he could now um, exercise faith to be healed. Now, Paul also operated in the gift at this point in time because the scripture says to us, Paul looked intently at him. Now, whenever the scripture tells us that um, Paul or anyone else in, in, in the book of Acts specifically looked intently at someone, it is always as a result of the demonstration of the spirit, spiritual gifts about to be made manifest. Another account we can look at in Acts 13, 9, Paul looked intently at uh, Elias the sorcerer. I think his name is Elias. Anyway, uh, the sorcerer. And, and Paul pronounced judgment on him. It was the gift of the working of miracles, the gift of faith also being displayed, and that man was made blind for a whole year. Um, but the point is, is that prior to Paul acting, uh, Paul looked intently at him. And in this occasion as well, prior to Paul acting, Paul looked intently at him. So the man had faith to be healed, but Paul also uh, was able to operate in the gifts of the Spirit as he was anointed by the Holy Spirit on this occasion. And the result is that the man uh, leapt up and walked. And so we see very clearly that the reason that um, the Holy Spirit could manifest his gifts of healing through Paul on that occasion was because faith was present. Now there's something else that we need to understand about this particular account which helps us um, to understand how the Holy Spirit does in fact make himself manifest. Um, the, the gifts of the Spirit were not made manifest before this occasion. And we know that Paul and both Barnabas had preached the gospel in the city to those selfsame people on numerous occasions before this occasion. You say, well, how do we know that? Well, the, the Bible tells we, we look at the way the, con the congregation, the crowd reacted when they saw this man healed. They saw this miracle taking place. The immediate reaction was, these guys are gods, and they wanted to sacrifice to them. If you go read the account in, in Scripture, they actually tried to uh, sacrifice to them. They called their priest of Zeus, whatever his name is, and they wanted to now make sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. So, this one, so why did they react like that? The reason they reacted like that when they saw this miracle was this was the first time they had seen the display of the power of God. They had not seen it before. And so we say, well, how do, how do we know that? Well, again, reading into this passage of Scripture, the Bible tells us that they wanted to uh, name Paul Hermes. Why? Because he was the chief speaker. So that indicates to us that they had heard both Barnabas and Saul, Paul at this time, preaching the gospel to them on previous occasions. 
They'd heard Paul more than Barnabas, which is why they said Paul was the chief speaker. But it was only on this occasion that the gift of the Spirit could be made manifest. Why is that? It's because on this occasion, faith was present. And so on other occasions, although Paul and Barnabas had preached the gospel to them, their faith level wasn't there. They were listening, they were curious, but they hadn't yet caught on. This man did catch on. He had faith. Paul recognized it, and the gift of the Spirit could be made manifest. And so very clearly, um, it was only on this occasion that faith was present, 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 and thus the gifts of the Spirit could be made manifest. Prior to that, that wasn't the case. And, that, and that's why when the, the, the people saw this miracle, they reacted in such a way, because they'd seen nothing before. Paul and Barnabas had spoken, and no power of God had been made manifest. No miracles had been performed, uh, no healings, nothing like that. But on this occasion, faith was now present. So we just need to understand the, the concept that the Holy Spirit makes himself manifest when faith is present. Um, and so when uh, supernatural manifestations take place in meetings and in ministries, and there's no faith present, um, red flags need to go up because, okay, this is, although it's supernatural, this is not God because Holy Spirit only makes himself manifest when faith is present. We're, we're not greater than our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord said we cannot be greater than our master, John 13, 16. And so let's have a look at an account of our, our Lord. It's a very well-known account, but it's also very, very illustrative to us of this concept about the gifts of the Spirit only being made manifest when faith is present. Mark 6, verse 1 to 6. The scripture says, Then he went out from there and came to his own country, speaking about Nazareth, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of the unbelief. Um, Matthew's account of this uh, same incident says that uh, Jesus uh, performed, no, he, he did no mighty work there because of the unbelief. And so what happened here? Our Lord Jesus Christ, he goes to his hometown of, of Nazareth. Now, he had been preaching in, in the towns of Galilee up until this point, uh, all around Galilee. And his reputation had got out there that, you know, this was a prophet who was anointed by God to heal the sick. And he had performed many miracles. So he'd gone in, he, his, his normal mode of, opera, of operation would be, he would go into the synagogue of the, of the local, local town and he would proclaimed to them the gospel. He would take Isaiah's passage, uh, Luke's account tells us about it, and he would read, the Lord, Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me, and then he would proclaim that you know, God's anointed him to heal the sick. And he would preach along those lines. And at the end of our Lord's teaching, our Lord would then invite people to come forward and he would lay hands on them so that they could be healed. And miracles took place. People were healed and mighty works were done. He comes to his hometown of Nazareth, so that's the reputation that he has. And so now he comes to his hometown of Nazareth, and they say, okay, we'll let you preach in our synagogue. This is the first time that Jesus preaches in that synagogue. He's grown up there from the time he was four years old uh, until he went into, well, he, him and the family moved to Capernaum just prior to our Lord entering into ministry. In all that time, our Lord had lived in that community, and they knew him as an adult as the carpenter, the carpenter's son. Joseph had a carpentry business. Jesus was the oldest son and part of that business. Jesus had never spoken in the synagogue as from teaching the word of God. They'd never heard him talk, teach before. 
And obviously he'd never performed any miracles before. But now he's in the ministry and he's performing miracles. So now he gets up and he preaches to them. He does his normal routine. He invites people to come forward so he can lay hands on them so that they can be healed. And the scripture says that he lays his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Now, the few sick people, the scripture also implies that they were, there was nothing major wrong with them. They had minor ailments, which is why the scripture says that he could there do no mighty work. So he couldn't do any major miracles there. And the reason why Jesus couldn't do it was because they refused to believe in him. They were actually offended with him. You know, who are you to think that you're anointed by God to heal the sick? We know you. You grew up with us. We went to school with you. You're the carpenter. You fixed the table in my home. And now you come along and you tell us you're anointed by God to heal the sick. Who do you think you are? And so they were offended at him. No faith was present. And because of that, our Lord Jesus was constrained in the, the, the power of God that he could make manifest among them because there was an absence of faith there. And so we're no better than our Lord Jesus Christ. And if our Lord Jesus was unable to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit because of the absence of faith among the congregation, well, that's exactly the same thing that we will experience as well. No matter how anointed we might be, uh, the Apostle Paul, if we just look at his account, um, if the faith is not present among those who hear the word preached, well, then no gifts of the Spirit will be made manifest. No display of power, God's power, will be made manifest. And so it's a very important truth that we need to recognize because there are churches and there are ministries, and I've seen it, I've watched it, um, where the, the pastor speaking about, or the minister, should I say, is speaking about whatever topic it might be. It's certainly not a topic about, um, the, well, whatever topic he's is, is, is talking about. And you see in the, in the congregation, all of a sudden people um, start to, a supernatural power comes upon them. And they begin to laugh out loud, or they begin to shake, or they begin to cry out. All these physical manifestations start to take place. And there's no faith there. In other words, nobody, it, it's all unexpected. No, the guy's just sitting there listening to them and he begins to start laughing uncontrollably or he begins to shake or she begins to cry out um, and the, the, the person who's, who's ministering is not speaking around these manifestations at all He's talking about something else completely and yet these manifestations take place well now that's not God because the faith is not being exercised by those who are the recipient of those uh, supernatural powers coming upon them and so the red flag needs to go up because demonic spirits don't require faith in order for them to operate. They're quite comfortable to operate as and when they choose and when people are um, available to them, open to them. Now, that's another point we need to understand around this concept. Uh, we can pick it up in Romans chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. The scripture says, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to, be, to perform. This is speaking about um, Abraham's faith in God. Now, Abraham could believe in God. Why? Because he, the scripture says he was fully convinced. Now, where was Abraham convinced? He was convinced in his mind. Uh, he con was convinced that the promise of God, God was faithful, God was able to bring about that which he had promised. So he heard God's word, and he, in his mind, he was convinced this is the truth. And so he exercised his faith in it. And so you also get these ministries and churches that try to do away with reasoning, with, with uh, the intellect. Um, and they, their viewpoint is, you know, don't question whatever power comes upon you, um, because you'll quench the Holy Spirit, you'll quench the work of the Spirit. And so just be open and just accept whatever comes your way. Well, that's not the Bible. The Bible talks about the fact that we faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so we actually actually have to hear the Word proclaimed, understand it, and then we can exercise our faith in it. And then and only then does the power of God get made manifest. But in, in churches and ministries where they encourage, keep your thoughts out of this. Don't think just react well that's just opening up to demonic spirits because 
That's exactly where Satan wants people to be, to not question anything. But as I say, if we're really going to receive the power of God through his giftings, it's because we believe what he's, what he's been taught to us, that man in Lystra. Paul taught on healing. He believed the healing power of God could be made manifest. Why? Because he heard the word of God preached on that subject, and thus he could release his faith, and the Holy Spirit reciprocated by demonstrating powers of, of, of healing. Jesus, when he was preaching, preached on, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to heal the sick. They, those who heard it and believed it could then exercise their faith in it, and thus the gifts of the Spirit was made manifest through our Lord Jesus Christ. But the understanding was present. They understood the Word of God, and then they could exercise their faith. And so, as I say, red flags must go up if you are in congregations and in meetings where supernatural manifestations are taking place and no faith is present. There's an abs absence of faith. Faith toward God. Faith in the gifts of the Holy Spirit being made, made manifest. Um, and also be very concerned when ministers tell you, don't question, just flow, you know, go with whatever comes upon you and, you know, just don't get your mind out of the way. Well, that's also not God. God's given us a mind uh, and when we, that's the only way we understand the Word of God when it is proclaimed. And thus we can release our faith in His Word. And so that's the fourth evidence that helps us to identify when supernatural manifestations take place among us. If there's an absence of faith and the manifestation takes place, well then that just shows us that's not the Holy Spirit, that is another spirit. And we'll end the teaching on that point.